Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we are going to talk about the Barcelona daily news. We have plenty to discuss and we are first going to talk about Todibo. Now I know that Todibo is not with Barcelona but a few days ago Todibo had one of his best matches under Schalke. There was a video showing the highlights and how well he was playing and I was also very impressed. But it did come with a lot of backlash from other people on Twitter, Instagram and Bleach Report saying that oh this is just Hoffenheim like if Todibo were to play against a very elite team it would have been a lot different but we have to remember that Todibo did play very well when he was with Barcelona especially when Barcelona played against Inter Milan Todibo played extremely well and people have said that he's been very inconsistent well the reason why he has been very inconsistent is because he doesn't play every match and with Barcelona he played like every seven matches every eight matches we barely used him and now that he is with Schalke he has been playing day in day out has he been starting every game with Schalke no but he does play and when he does play he does put out a very decent performance and when he does not put out a decent performance he puts out a very impressive performance and that is what happened two to three days ago so I don't know where people say oh Todibo is very inconsistent and he just played against Hoffenheim like he has proven that he can play against very elite teams and we have to remember that he is 20 years old he's barely starting to get a grasp of what first team football feels like and he's only going to get better and more consistent the more he plays the more minutes he gets with Schalke and as I was looking at these highlights and if you guys haven't seen that highlighted video of Todibo let me know I'll send you guys the link but when I was looking at the highlights I have noticed that he is very good on 1v1 situations when I was watching those highlights he looked very focused like he was very focused on the ball and and where the feet were going to go. I love that. I love that trait from a defender. That is something that Puyol demonstrated in his prime years with FC Barcelona and Todibo is showing the exact same thing. I love that focus and what really helped in that 1v1 situation is not just his focus but his physicality and his quickness. Mainly his quickness because he reacts very quick when a player that he's marking does a very quick move. Like he knows where that player is going to go and he reacts very well. That is something Something that Barcelona really misses. Barcelona does not have that at all actually because right now we have Piquet, Umtiti and Lenglet. None of those players can act as quickly as Todibo nor are they as fast as Todibo. So again that is something that Barcelona really lacks which is that speed, that quickness on the defense. Todibo will be a fundamental player if he continues to improve for Schalke and if we bring him in he will be a very important player for FC Barcelona. So I highly recommend Barcelona to bring him back for next season and try him out because again he is showing that he's a world-class player he has potential he has what it takes to become one of the world's best defenders now I want to move on to what happened yesterday yesterday Real Madrid and Real Betis played and Real Madrid lost 2-1 against Real Betis away from home and thanks to Theo who is a former Barcelona player who got introduced to first team football under Guardiola in 2012 thanks to him Real Madrid did not get those three points and now we are two points ahead of Real Madrid just when we thought that Madrid was going to win La Liga because they beat us 2-0 in El Clasico they were not able to capitalize against Real Betis and this is crazy because we just don't know how this is going to end like that's the question how is La Liga going to end who's going to win La Liga because one day Barcelona's first place the other day Real Madrid is first place and then it goes back and forth back and forth no one is able to take that big step and say we are winning La Liga we are the ones who are going to be first place we are going to win this league this year no team is able to do that Atletico Madrid is not able to do that Real Madrid is not able to do that Barcelona is not able to do that now we know that both teams have their problems Barcelona has problems defensively Madrid has their problems when they are attacking they have no real goal scores and what I can tell you guys is this whoever fixes their problem first wins the league if Barcelona manages to get their defense to improve first then they will win the league if Real Madrid finds their goal scoring form first then they will win the league so football can be very strange it's very unpredictable because if you think about it Barcelona beat Real Betis 3-2 Real Betis beat 
Real Madrid 2-1. And then Real Madrid beat Barcelona 2-0. So it's like a big circle. It's a big cycle. Like we don't know who is the better team. Now, we must be very careful because if Barcelona wins La Liga this year, it's going to end up being very misleading. And let me tell you why. Last year when Barcelona won La Liga under Valverde, I believe that was the main reason why we did not try as hard, right, to get Neymar to Barcelona because I believe they came with the attitude of saying, hey, we won La Liga. We're not as bad as we think. I believe that we can make it with this same team next year. And then even Messi said after the transfer window was over, he said they did not try as hard to get Neymar back into Barcelona. And I believe the same thing is going to happen this year if we win La Liga. Bartomeu is going to say, hey, we're not as bad as we think. We won La Liga. We beat Real Madrid. We beat Atletico Madrid. We don't need to go as hard. We don't need to bring Martinez and Neymar. Maybe we can just bring one of those players. Bartomeu could come with that same attitude this year if we win La Liga. And I'm afraid that's going to happen. And and I don't want that to happen. Again, that could be very misleading. Barcelona is not in their best state at the moment. The reason why if we do end up winning La Liga is because Real Madrid is not able to capitalize and Atletico Madrid is not able to capitalize. Regardless if we do win La Liga or not, we must know that we are not in our best moments and Bartomeu has to realize that. And if you're going to ask me, right, as much as I love FC Barcelona, as much as I want them to win every title, I actually do want them to fail to win the league this season because I really want that slap in the face for the club, for the board, for the president to say, hey, this is what happens when you have bad preparation. This is what happens when you let go of the wrong players in the transfer window. This is what happens when you bring in the wrong players in the transfer window. I want them to pay that price because I want them to realize the mistakes that they did this season. So again, I don't know how this is going to end. I don't know who's going to win La Liga, but I just hope that if we do win the league, I don't want this to be misleading to the fans, to the president, to every player in Barcelona. Now moving on to the Barcelona versus Napoli game. We did hear yesterday a big report came out saying that Barcelona hasn't received official communications about whether the game against Napoli will be behind closed doors. A decision will be made in a few days. The last time Barcelona played against with no fans at the Camp Nou was on October 1st, 2017 against Las Palmas where Barcelona won 3-0. Zero. And then if we move on here, it's not yet official, but the local government is strongly in favor of closing the match. And then according to Rack 1, today and tomorrow, there will be a meeting between different departments of the government and the club to discuss the possibility of Barcelona v Napoli game to be played behind closed doors. So do I agree with this statement? Like, do I believe that the fans should be taken away from this game and, and have this game being behind closed doors? I'm going to have to say for the sake of the safety of these players, I would say yes. But then I don't want this happening behind closed doors for one reason. And that is we won't be able to have that home advantage. We have to remember that in the last game, we had that hard tie against Napoli. We ended 1-1. It was a very difficult game. And now we know that in the next game, when we, when we do play at home, it's going to be difficult regardless. And not having those fans is only going to make it even more difficult. And I don't want that to happen. We need that home advantage. We need that extra support. If this action does take place, like if we do play behind closed doors, this will be in Napoli's favor. Now, there has been solutions, right? Saying that there could be a medical check for all the Napoli fans or not having the Napoli fans come into the camp now in general. But I don't even think that will be fair. That doesn't even sound fair to say that no, no Napoli fans could come into the camp now. That sounds wrong and I don't want that to happen because you always need to have a little fan base of the opponent's team so we don't know how this is going to go down again this could very well affect our performance against Napoli when we do play at home so I am very yes and no about this situation I don't know how this is going to go down let me know what you guys think about this do you think that we should play behind closed doors or not now moving on to Ivan Rakitic according to Cat Radio Barcelona will sell the Croatian midfield Ivan Rakitic this summer so this is no surprise we know 
what Barcelona was trying to do last summer with Rakitic. They were trying to put him in multiple deals, but in the end, Rakitic said that he wanted to stay. He wanted to prove himself that he is a great player, that he still contributes a lot to the team. But now we are here. We are in a different season. Rakitic continues to show us that he is not the player that he used to be. And look, I love Rakitic. I thank him for all of the memories that he gave us, like in the 3-1 win against Juventus and all of these other games, right? I'm grateful for this player. But again, when it's your time to go, it is your time to go. And if you, can, and if you can't bring results, then you can't bring results. And he has been strongly linked to a move against Atletico Madrid, Juventus, PSG. So teams will be fighting for this player in the summer. The real challenge is, is to get the most out of this player, the most value out of Ivan Rakitic. His contract does end in 2021. So this is the perfect time to sell this player this summer. And we must get the most value from this player. Like I said before, in this transfer window, if we want to be able to pull off Neymar and Martinez in the same transfer window, we must sell Ivan Rakitic and get the most money value from this player. So I would advise Barcelona, knowing that there is a lot of teams competing for this player, I would advise Barcelona to sell him for around 30 to 35 million euros. Do I know what team he will go to? No, I don't. But what we do know is that multiple teams will be competing for this player. So that shouldn't be a problem on transferring him out. What matters is to get the most value from this player. That is the final conclusion for Ivan Rakitic. Now I want to move on to the last topic of the day, which is about Mark andre Ter Stegen. And this is some great news. According to Sport, Barcelona want to renew Ter Stegen until 2024. And the club are confident they will do that. His current deal ends in 2022. Ter Stegen's agent and Barcelona met four times. Talks began in December. Ter Stegen's buyout fee is 180 million euros. He's happy and he wants to stay. Now, this is nothing but great news for FC Barcelona and the fans. We know that Mark andre Ter Stegen has saved us multiple times since the game against Bayern Munich in 2015 to the game against Napoli in 2020. He has been a fundamental player for Barcelona over the past five years. And I believe that if he continues to go in this form, in this run, he will go down as one of Barcelona's greatest goalkeepers to ever played in a Barcelona t-shirt. And at the moment, he is slowly becoming one of the most important players besides Messi for FC Barcelona. Barcelona. Not just because he acts like a captain, but he brings the leadership in this team. Something that Barcelona lacks. There's no real leadership in FC Barcelona and Mark andre Ter Stegen provides just that. And I'm going to predict something here. I believe in the future, if he does extend the contract, I believe in one to two seasons, he will have a greater role on the defense and he will greatly influence his defensive line. I don't know if you guys noticed, but he is heavily involved on how the defense functions. We know that we struggle defensively. We have been having this problem over the past one to two seasons. And Mark andre Ter Stegen is one of the answers in order to fix that problem. Mark andre Ter Stegen wants them in a certain position. He wants them to act in a certain way. He wants them to be very attentive. And I love that. He is a leader. I do see him as captain in one to two seasons. He wants the right attitude from his players. And one of the greatest examples was against Napoli when Mark andre Ter Stegen screamed at Semedo to pay attention on that corner kick because he does not want to repeat the same mistake. Mark andre Ter Stegen is on top of it. I love it. And it should be one of Barcelona's priorities to renew Mark andre Ter Stegen's contract. He fully deserves it. And if he wants to raise, give him that. So that is it for today's Barcelona daily news. I want to thank you guys for watching. There is a lot going on in Barcelona right now. And I will make a pre-match preview for the Napoli versus Barcelona game. A lot of you guys have been asking for that preview. So I will be making it again. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in my next video.